when we shoot, I want you guys to use and trigger all of your muscles in your body and allow them to explode at the net. If you are shooting five to 10 times in a row, you should be out of breath. Otherwise, I personally feel that you're not doing it as well as you could, okay? Does that make sense? It's much, shooting should be like hitting as a middle linebacker or throwing a punch like a, like a yeah, I guess, struggle. I, I would say Floyd Mayweather, but they're kind of light heavyweight, so who's the biggest heavyweight right now? That's what I want, like huge heavyweight hook. You need to throw everything you can, anchor your legs, kick them out, follow through, use your hips, tighten up your core, rotate your core, turn your elbow, release your elbow, follow all the way through to your shot, all right? And that's tiring. Okay, so a couple things that I want to work on first. So transitioning from shooting, from passing to shooting, okay? I like to do a drill. Make sure you guys can see over there. If you can't, just stand. Called a point of release drill. So I stand about, <clears throat> stand about five yards out and five yards up from goal line extended, okay? And I'm very close to the net because I want to work on knowing exactly where that ball is releasing from my pocket. When we start getting to 10 to 12 yards, the reality is two things. One, because we're further, all right, we want to shoot the ball harder so we lose some of our form. And two, the lacrosse ball made of dense rubber oftentimes will dip or move off of its trajectory, believe it or not. Goalies will, will validate that, especially in the MLL, where these balls will sometimes dip outside of 16 yards, which is where the two-point line is. So I like to stand right up close, and I want to work on hitting that opposite corner repetitively, okay? I don't want to rotate my body as I'm shooting, okay, because what I want to really focus on is snapping my wrist for accuracy and pushing and pulling. So it's a warm-up exercise where if I shoot and it starts low, I want to start breaking my wrist more, okay? So as I start going through this, I'm reacting, okay, to where the previous ball had shot. Whatever you guys do with one hand, that's not gonna work. We wanna do it with our other hand. Okay, so that's really why I like to count reps because I don't want to do something which we tend to do with our strong hand more than our weak hand. Okay, so working on activating our wrist. All right. Too low for me right now. I gotta get the ball higher. There we go. Too high. Too high. Okay, so something to think about. And what I'd like to have a couple of volunteers do, although we're kind of running on time, is when you do this drill, I want you to know the difference of trajectory points. So if one shot does go too high, you know that's your limit on breaking your wrist. Can't snap your wrist more than that. If you're shooting like I am right now with a little whip in your stick and the ball's going a little bit lower, I've got to find that balance. Too high was here, too low was here. I've got to try and find that, that spot. So. That's too low, a little bit higher, a little bit higher. Okay, so, any volunteers wanna come out? Okay, right up there, come on out here. I want you guys just to feel that as you're shooting, we're close to the net, okay, and we are working on just lining our front shoulder up with that pipe, all right, and trying to hit it, okay? Angle your body, there you go. All right, one more, time out. Okay, so his natural release was three quarter, which is fine. So your, your wrist snap should still be here then. So if you're shooting sidearm and you are, bringing the, or you are hooking the ball short side, here you go, or the ball is flying out that way, here you go. I didn't think. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> All right, you're gonna have to react with your wrists, okay? So there it is, a little bit more. So your wrists are still engaged in the same thing underhand, okay? 
I'll talk about underhand as well. Go ahead. You got it. Take it again. All right, all right. Here we go. Step up. Good. Okay, now this time, when you shoot, I want you to trust me and try and bring your stick further back over the top. See if it releases higher. Go ahead. All the way back. Touch it. Okay. Too much whipping your stick. That's my stick, actually, not his. Yeah. You guys following me a little bit? I'll show you from this angle now. Reason why I like to really activate my wrist, too, all right, is, your de- is there's a lot of deception for the goalie. If most guys drop their shoulder down to shoot low, goalies will hitch because they follow your shoulder. So if you're able to keep your shoulder up and just tighten your wrist to snap down, all right, they stay frozen. Does that make sense? So the first one was like this to try and get the ball down like most of us do. And the second one was rather than snapping my wrist, stay up here and just snap it straight down because your wrist tightened and the ball is releasing right here versus here. Okay? Guys, grab shirts. Nice job. Grab shirts. Yeah, thank you. If you're going for the far side sidearm, it's the most difficult shot to save as a goalie because it releases out of your stick quick and stays on the same plane. You have got to release your, release your wrist early on. So to give you guys a slow-mo, my wrist is snapping here, so the ball releases here, and it stays there. If I hold onto my wrist more on my sidearm, I can pull it across my body. Okay, so I'll pull it across there, and I'll snap it here. I'm going to go through a few. Okay. All right, so let me talk a little bit about power in your shot now. Power in your shot, all right? That comes from your hips and below, all right? Too many times do you guys take shots like I was just doing, okay? And my hips and my legs aren't following through, okay? Here, my legs are standing still, okay? You may get some velocity, but you're not using the biggest anchor in your body, which is your legs, okay? So the way to activate them starts with a wide base. If you have a narrow base, you can't generate momentum right to left. Let's have a nice wide base, probably after a crow hop or a drop step, but you have a wide base, and as you shoot, I want you guys to shift your weight from your back leg through to your front leg, okay? And as you're coming through, much like a golf swing, Everything releases at the same time. Your back leg follows through generally to where the ball goes. So I'll show you here. I'm anchored back, wide base, follow through. This back leg usually goes to where the ball is pointed. So it helps me with power and accuracy. I'm a terrible golfer, but I have been told that when you swing, if you get your belly button towards the target, that's going to generate that right turn to get the ball in the right plane. Okay, similar. Bringing your back leg through enforces getting your belly button towards the target. If you stay back here, your belly button ultimately over there where those ladies are. Yes, question. So we answering reaching back straight back or just back? Good question. So straight back or wrapping around? So I would say you want to bring straight back as much as you can. When you start wrapping around, I see kids doing that. And that's when the ball just flies out anywhere. It really does. So if you can keep, as you're shooting sidearm, a little tip, a level plane of rotation where your shoulders are going. You see balls sky, eh. (laughs) When guys start with their shoulder down. Start with their shoulder down, where's it gonna end up? Up, so guys will start down and shoot up. We made it. We made it, Colin. All right. So, but hey, look, seriously, you, you may not be able to get that trajectory and that right and that, you know, that really clip under the bar if you're not doing that, but you're limiting your margin for error if you keep your shoulders on all right, the direct plane. It, you're still, you could still miss, right? But you just have a little bit more control, okay? All right, now... Shooting with power. Shoot a few. Much like a golf swing too, 
there's a lot more margin for error when you're using your entire body. Ultimately, the best shot, using every muscle in your body, loading it up, releasing it, your wrists and your arms, your shoulders, your core, your legs, all release at the same point towards, that, towards your target, and that's when the ball goes there. If there's a slight change of an angle or a degree, you still could hit that corner, but the chances are far greater when you're doing this type of shot, but that's why we practice. So I'll take a few, and then I'm going to show you another way to practice. So I'm rotating my hips. All right. And I'm using my shoulder. And I'm just, come on! One more. Okay, so that's kind of an over-exaggerated, you know, fastest shot. Maybe not a shot you should take in a game or probably have time to take in a game, but I really like overemphasizing the point. Okay, so 